Hello and welcome to PersonalTrainerExam.com. Today I'm going to be talking about the muscular system. There are over 600 skeletal muscles in the human body, which makes up 40% to 50% of the total body weight. Skeletal muscle is specialized to produce movement of a body part. Its cells convert the chemical energy of ATP into the mechanical energy of contraction. Skeletal muscle is an organ that contains muscle fibers, fibrous connective tissue, nerve tissue, and blood vessels. Skeletal muscle is an organ. An organ is a structure made up of two or more tissue types that work together to carry out a specific vital function. Here's a picture of skeletal muscle. We have muscle fiber here at the bottom. We have the fibrous connective tissue, epimyceum, perimyceum, endomyceum. We have the nerve tissue here in orange. And the red and blue is the blood vessels. Function of skeletal muscles. Force generation for movement and breathing. Force generation for postural support. Communication, for example, speaking, writing, and sign language, control of body openings and passages, and heat production. Skeletal muscle appears multinucleated due to the many nuclei located on the outside of the cell. It has a striated appearance due to the alternating dark and light patterns that appear across the length of the muscle fiber. A skeletal muscle fiber is about the diameter of a human hair. It's cylindrical in shape. Skeletal muscle cells are long cells that generally extend the entire length of the muscle. And the muscle fibers are grouped in bundles called fasciculi. Here's a picture of skeletal muscle. And as you can see, it's multinucleated. There's many nuclei located on the outside or periphery of the cell. It has a striated appearance. That's the alternating dark and light patterns that you see here. It's cylindrical in shape and a skeletal muscle fiber. It's about the diameter of a human hair. Shortly, I'm going to talk about the connective tissue found in skeletal muscle. But first, here's a brief review of what connective tissue is. Connective tissue supports, binds, and protects organs. It plays various roles in immunity, movement, energy storage, transport, and other processes. The different types of connective tissue are fibrous tissue, cartilage, bone, and blood. There are three types of connective tissue found in skeletal muscle, epimyceum, perimyceum, and endomyceum. Epimyceum is the outermost layer that surrounds the entire muscle. Perimyceum surrounds the muscle fiber bundles. Remember, the muscle fiber bundles are called fasciculi, and the endomyceum surrounds each individual muscle fiber. To help you remember these terms, it helps to break down the term. Remember that MYS, mice, means muscle. Endo means within. Peri means around. And epi means upon or above. These two terms here, epimyceum and perimyceum, they get me confused at times because I know they both surround the muscle. The perimyceum surrounds the muscle fiber bundles and the epimyceum is surrounding the entire muscle. So to help me um, remember these two terms, I like to associate the E in epimyceum with entire. And that's what helps me remember that the epimyceum is the outermost layer that surrounds the entire muscle. Here's a picture of the three types of connective tissue found in skeletal muscle. You have the endomyceum, which surrounds the individual muscle fibers, the perimyceum, 
Remember again, peri means around. This is going to surround the entire muscle fiber bundles or the fascicula. And epimyceum, associate the E with entire. The epimyceum is the connective tissue that surrounds the entire muscle. All three connective tissues, endomyceum, perimyceum, and epimyceum, are all continuous with the tendon. So force generated within the muscle is going to pull on the tendon, and the tendon is going to pull on the bone. The tendon actually attaches to the outside of the bone, which is called the bone periosteum. And the bone periosteum is a dense layer of vascular connective tissue covering all bones. Some collagen fibers of the outer layer are continuous with the tendons that attach muscle to bone, and some penetrate into the bone matrix. The periosteum therefore provides a strong attachment from muscle to tendon to bone. And to help you remember this term, periosteum, it helps by breaking it down. We know that peri means around and oste means bone. So this is the dense layer of vascular connective tissue around the bone. Here's a few pictures of bone periosteum. Remember bone periosteum covers all bones and it's a vascular tissue. It contains blood vessels and it provides a strong attachment from muscle to tendon to bone. A tendon is a collagenous connective tissue that attaches a muscle to a bone and the tendon attaches to the bone periosteum. Next I'm going to give you a brief review of what structures make up our neuron. So, a neuron is composed of a soma, which also stands for cell body, and in the soma you're going to find the nucleus and most other organelles. A neuron contains dendrites, and dendrites receive signals from other cells and transmit those messages toward the soma. The dendrites are the primary site for receiving signals from other neurons. And you have the axon. Another name for axon is nerve fiber, and the axon carries nerve signals away from the soma. You can associate the A with axon with the A in a way. It's going to carry messages, nerve signals away from the soma. Here's a typical picture of a neuron. This structure here is the soma. Another name for soma is cell body. These projections outward here are the dendrites and the dendrites transmit messages toward the soma. So these yellow arrows here are transmitting the messages toward the soma or cell body. The axon carries nerve signals away from the soma. So that's why the red arrow is here. It's going away from the soma, down the axon. Motor neuron. A motor neuron is a nerve cell forming part of a pathway along which impulses pass from the brain or spinal cord to a muscle or gland. The cell bodies of these neurons are located in the brainstem and spinal cord. Neuromuscular junction. Another name for neuromuscular junction is the motor end plate. And this is the site where the motor neuron and the skeletal muscle cell meet. So to help you remember this term, break it down. Neuro means nerves. Muscular obviously means muscle and junction means connection. So this is the connection between the nerve fiber and the skeletal muscle fibers.